Hello everyone, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Saint Joe Two and Love. Here we're doing a dumb dynamite review for August 18th, 2021. Very fun show. Very fun show was Dynamite last night. You know, Sting's first match on TNT in over 20 years. We had that. We had Sammy Guevara versus Sean Spears. We had MJF versus Chris Jericho in the fifth layer of Jericho. Also had a very good tag team title match between the Bucks and Jurassic Express. Get into more detail about that in a bit. But thank you for joining me. Uh, if you're new to the podcast, click that subscribe if you want to see more of these videos as far as sports topics or pro wrestling reviews are concerned. Of course, if you like this video, click that like button as well. Um, so I'll be back for Rampage, obviously, on Saturday, as well as NXT TakeOver 36. I'll have some review on Monday about that. I'll, and then for the next week, the schedule is going to look a little different. I hope not, but of course, I'll still be doing Sports OV Topics for Tuesday. And then, yeah, well, now that I'll be back to school, I'll be, pre- I'll be recording these videos in advance. Usually when you get these videos is re- literally right after, besides sports OV topics, is usually when you get these videos, but I'll be recording them in advance so it may look a little different but nonetheless now let's get into the review with that out of the way first so congratulations to Sammy Guevara he proposed to his girlfriend who is now his fiance tonight Before Dynamite, that was the special announcement that they were procuring up. So, good for them. But the show started off with John Marksley and Eddie Kingston. They came out. Now, I did not see it. I had to go back and watch it. But... They were ambushed by 2.0. And then Sting and Darby came out for the match. And it was a good Texas Tornado opener for the show. So, again, Sting's first match on TNT in over 20 years. Was a pair of stinger splashes by Darby and Sting in the corner. Nice spot. Then they brawled in the crowd towards the concourse area. Darby, he was thrown into the wall area, kind of. There was, of course, the gap towards the opening of the concourse, which led to the crowd. So. Darby was thrown to that area. Took him out for a bit. Sting was attacked two on one. Then Daniel Garcia joined the action. Tipped the odds into 2.0. Made a three on two. And then A. Kingston came back to even the odds. For Sting and Darby took out Daniel Garcia. Then they fought back into the ring. There was a table set up in the ring. Sting, he was thrown by the members of 2.0. 
and an assisted power bomb tore in or excuse me through the table and Sting and classic Sting fashion. No soul, the spot, got up and did this rampage spot that only Sting could do. And Sting hit a double Scorpion Death Drop on 2.0, followed with a double Scorpion Death Lock. In which they tapped out for the win. Sting and Darby get the victory. And Sting in his first match again uh, in over 20 years on TNT is victorious. And I must say 2.0 from where they were in NXT... To really doing nothing and to be feuding with the likes of Moxley, Kingston, Sting, and Darby is a giant upgrade. Giant upgrade. Now, yes, they've made victories on Dark, but still... To how they were before, to how they are now, it's just can't help but feel happy for them, considering where they were. So then, as I mentioned before, now they played up the engagement of Sammy Guevara and his fiance. And then Sean Spears, he was backstage with Tony Blanchard. Cutting a promo just before the match. Saying slim pickings in Houston, are we? So then he said, when you're in the pinnacle, you're always on top. And then he said, Pam... Sammy Guevara's fiance. For one night, he let her be on top. So Spears is good at being a heel and cutting a promo point blank. So then we get to this match, and it was short but sweet and very good. So Sammy Guevara, he came out into his hometown of Houston. And then he was attacked by Spears during the entrance. So they were fighting outside. Sammy hit a beautiful senton from the ramp towards the ringside area on Spears. Then totally got involved. He had a spike pile driver off the steps with the help of Spears. First in the match, and then he went for it again, and then he was caught by Aubrey, and then was ejected through his jacket at Aubrey Edwards. So, talk about a reckless spot. And then, probably the spot of the match. So, they both springboarded from the apron to the top rope. And then Spears, he flipped off Guevara and a beautiful cutter by Guevara off the top rope to Spears for a near fall. And then Guevara, he went for a top rope Hurricanrana, but was countered to a C4 off the mill rope for another near fall and then there was a piece of the guardrail set up bridge in between the apron and the barricade so then 
Guevara off the top rope hit a his version of the C4 or a Death Valley Driver on the spears on this piece of guardrail, which had to have sucked. It bent a little bit, but it didn't break. So, tough spot. And then Guevara hit a beautiful 630 off the top rope to Spears for another near fall. And then finally, after apparent knee strikes with his knee exposed, Guevara finished the match with the GTH for the win. Heck of a match. He went over to his fiance. They embraced, they kiss, and that was it. So, heck of a match for Spears and Guevara. So, Christian Cage, who is backstage with Tony Schiavone and his Impact and TNA World Titles. So... He was interrupted by Don Callis praising Chris Cage. Said he's happy for him. Said that out all out till finally have that five star match he's been waiting for with K Omega. Chris Cage stopped him and said, you may think he's in his head, but really he's in K Omega's head. Yeah, all. At all out, he'll take the world title from K Omega. And that Don Callis will always be a carny piece of shit. So, Tony Schiavone, he was verbally and visually laughing. And Don Callis said, Don't you say anything. So, Tony Schiavone said, Back. To ringside and hilarious. So curious to see what's gonna escalate all out. I'm not quite sure. I mean, I had a feeling what might happen during the tag team top match, but nonetheless, uh, we'll see during towards the all out. Which I don't think this match between Omega and Cage will be happening. But we'll see. So next for you MMA and UFC fans. Dan Lambert. He was out in the ring. He said weeks ago he'd be back on Dynamite. With backup. So he was there with Andre Arlovsky and Junior Dos Santos. So he said he was going to finish what he was about to say weeks ago at Road Ranger that AW is not the answer to pro wrestling problems. And that AEW's fellow would want to be tough guys who could wrestle out of paper bag. And that he dares anybody to come out of the locker room to shut him up. But we're not patient. So then all of a sudden Lance Archer's music hit. And you think deja vu. And, you know, he's got... Arlovsky and Dos Santos with them. But then Archer gets blindsided by and I was I was happy for the segment because uh, Dan Lambert cut a good promo, solid promo a month ago and 
I love seeing Arlovsky and Dos Santos as an MMA fan myself. And Archer, good to see him back after defending or losing the IWGP US title at a resurgence to Hiroshi Tanahashi, the ace, Saturday night. So, but seeing the men of the year back took it from here to me as a segment down to here. I mean, I love Ethan Page, the way he's grown since his debut at Revolution in February. But Scorpio Sky and this team as a whole is not working for me. It's just not. I wish they would go back. I mean, Frank Kazarian, yes, he's the elite hunter, but he's not doing much. And I'd rather see him back with Frankie. Say the shtick with Ethan Page, but then, but nonetheless, Archer blindsided by the man of the year, Ethan Page, scored the sky, stopped his tracks, and that was how the segment finished. So it's a little odd because. Lambert, he has backup, but instead, the man of the year is what ultimately stopped Archer. It's just, now, Archer had relevance, and when he won the IWGP US title from Moxley weeks ago in that Texas death match. Now he's lost the US title of Tanahashi. And I hope not, but it seems like Archer might be feuding again with the men of the year, which, I mean, If Archer goes over, I'm okay with, but it just feels like a lackluster feud when Archer seeing how he was weeks ago to now. And it's just frustrating to see as a Lance Archer fan. You know, he had it, now he's not. It, it is what it is. So then we had the fun tag team match between the Young Bucks, Jurassic Express for tag team titles. I was curious with the unpredictability that and not knowing who the Bucks may face all out how we could get Jurassic Express winning here and then a six man tag winner takes all Christian and Jurassic Express versus the Elite all out, but that was not the case. However, still, this was a fun tag team match. So, it was a dive by Jungle Boy on the outside. Matt took out Luchasaurus with a diving crossbody off the top rope on the outside. Then a beautiful Hurricanrana from inside the ring to outside. Or to the apron taking Dick Jackson to the outside by Jungle Boy. Then Luchasaurus got a hot tag in the match. Clean's house. 
And then what could have been a scary spot, but luckily nothing happened. So Jungle Boy and Nick Jackson, they were on the top rope. And Luchasaurus, so I'm not sure if it was a botch, but still it looked good. So Jungle Boy got into the shoulders, or he tried to, of Luchasaurus, but it looked like he slipped a little. And instead of a assisted suplex, it was a brain buster, so good spot. And then jump or excuse me. Luchasaurus after laying a pair of kicks, knocking down the young box he had double choke slam and then Jungle Boy, he jumped off the back of Luchasaurus while he was caught with a super kick party. And then the Young Bucks hit a assisted indie taker for a, what I thought was the finish of the match, but it was a near fall. Then K. Omega came out and Good brothers who are ringside. K. Omega, he took out Marco's son with a chair and brought the chair in the ring for Matt Jackson to use, but it backfired as Jungle Boy hit a brain buster on the chair. When Carl Anderson had the referee distracted for another near fall. And then Luchasaurus, he took out the Good Brothers on the outside and Michael Nakazawa with a moonsault off the top rope. And then left Jungle Boy in the ring. Went for a backslide on Matt Jackson, but Nick Jackson rolled that through, and they hit a BT trigger on Jungle Boy for the win. And the Young Bucks retain a solid tag team match. Um, and it was announced that after this match that... There will be a four-way elimination tag team number one contenders tournament for the tag team titles for the Bucks all out. So Friday Rampage will be the Young Bucks, or excuse me, Jurassic Express first private party. And the winner of that match will face the winner of next week's match between the Varsity Blondes and the Lucha Brothers. And the winner of that match will get the Young Bucks in a steel cage match at All Out for the Tag Team titles. So, interesting. Interesting way to look forward to All Out. We'll see. So then we got Britt Baker backstage. She's with Rebel and Jamie Hayter. She said that all was right now that Jamie Hayter now has her back. And... Jamie Ayers said some things. She said, ask how Chris Satlander and Rev Velvet how my boots feel. And she challenged Red Velvet to a match next week. Jamie Hayers' first match back against Red Velvet. Interesting. 
Then they did the DMD shtick, and Brett Baker said, Jamie Hayer will get used to it. Then what was the low point of the show? So, Tony Schiavone was in the room. He welcomed Paul White out, who, of course, they're commenting with for elevation. So, Shivani thanks Paul White for his actions last week. So, Paul White was about to make an announcement, but then QT Marshall and the Factory, they came out. And Marshall showed x-rays of Paul White talking about how his injuries and such. And Paul White will get a match a match at All Out against QT Marshall. Now, here's the thing. First of all, for the factory, we know how... Look, I like Nick Camarado and Aaron Solo. I think they're young and they can add a good plethora to AEW for years to come. QT Marshall is just you know when he turned heel and he cut that promo in the factory with a go-go and such. He's not really doing anything. Uh, uh, look, I love Paul White and was a big fan of the big show. Used to. Now, I get it. Give us first match back and in years, years. And this is primarily probably to just show WWE that Paul White, aka the former Big Show, is wrestling for AEW. I just hopefully it's short and sweet at Big Show or Paul White gives a big choke sum to QT Marshall and that's it. But we'll see. So then of course the elite were backstage celebrating and Tony Schiavone got word confirmation of the no one contenders tournaments which will start on Friday. Rampage. So then we got Thunder Rosa versus Penelope Ford. So this okay. I mean, Thunder Rosa, she is very over, very over. With the crowd in AEW. It's good to see her as a full time. Uh, contractor. Employee. Of AEW. Gets Penelope Ford which. Where has Kip Sabian been? I'm just. I'm curious. 
because now it's just weird seeing her by herself. That's all. I mean, now Kip Saban obviously dies to go to the wrestler, and of course. Dell before is the better of the two, but it's just kind of strange when you hear her be called the super bad girl and this their super bad quote unquote is not there, Kip Sabian, but oh well. But Rosa choked her out for the win. Pretty much it. Gives Rosa a dynamite and another win for her. So then we got confirmation for some matches the next week. So again, Marcy Bonds versus Lucha Brothers should be an interesting match. J.B. Hayter versus Red Velvet. And next week, Malachi Black. Off his decimation of Cody Rhodes. Well, I feel sorry for Arn Anderson. Because it's going to be Malachi Black for son, Rock Anderson. And poor Brock is probably going to get his head taken off with the Sin Eater or whichever he calls his finisher now. The Black Bass, a.k.a. now the Sin Eater. We'll see. Then the main event. MJF versus Chris Jericho. No Jewess. No juice effect for Jericho. So MJF came out and so correct. So the Titron was playing. The pyro was still out, but no music. Chris Jericho came out and the 5,000 or how many that were in attendance. So Jericho to the ring. Talk about a great moment. It was hilarious because as Jericho's pyro went off. So, Joshua Gonzalez, she was announcing for tonight, no Justin Roberts, but she was about to announce Jericho, and Jericho waved her off, because he knew that it would kind of ruin the moment, and he knew the moment that what was happening uh, Jericho being sunned to the ring by the audience. And just a great moment, a great entrance. So, Jericho took it to MJF after he slapped to the face. He hit his Melvro drop kick, which knocked. MJF to the outside and then a dive over the top rope by Jericho. And then MJF took a spot from Jericho where he takes a camera from a cameraman and then he started flipping off the audience. You verbally see or you visually see some guys in the audience telling MJF, F you. Which you gotta love it. And then MJF turns around and there's Jericho. Then he socks him in the face. 
So now MJF target Jericho's arm, his injured arm, because Jericho still had the excuse me sleeve on his shoulder, his elbow. So Jericho hit the line soul for a near fall. Then they top rope her Karana, which is so impressive from a 50 year old Jericho. Doing a top rope her Karana on MJF. Then he went for the near fall and was countered into the salty earth Pujawa Arbar by MJF. Then Jericho went for the walls of Jericho was countered by a boot to the face. Then Jericho was thrown to the ramp, but MJF then hit the heat seeker for their fall. Jericho then went for a sleeper hold. Because you know we can't hit the juice effect. And then because Aubrey was right in front of Jer or MJF, MJF fell low blow on Benos to Aubrey. So MJF applied the walls of Jericho by himself. And Jericho got to ropes. MJF tried to use the dynamite diamond ring, but to no avail. Jericho then got Boyd the bat and hit Jericho or MJF in the stomach with it, and then went for the juice effect, but then realized he can't use it. So then MJF walked on the salt of the earth and Jericho, after fighting out of him or trying to fight out of it, tapped out to MJF and MJF ends the journey of the labors of Jericho. Jericho gets to the four labors, Spears, Nick Gage, Wardlow, and Juventud Guerrera, only to get defeated by MJF. Solid way to end the show. Not much to say. Right out of Just the question because MJF went clean and tapped out Jericho. You know, what's next? And, you know, are they going to wrestle at all out? It's just a question. Because as clean as you could be for MJF and just saw the way to the show. Well, so Friday we got Rampage and CM Punk, United Center. Much anticipated. We'll see if it actually happens, which everyone's assuming, which I just tried this be as surprised as I can for when it happens, but we'll see. But that's the show, everyone. That's the review. I hope you all enjoyed it. I did too. I'll be back Saturday with your AEW Rampage review as well as Monday back in with your NXT TakeOver 36 review. So thank you. Click that like if you like the, this video as well as the subscribe to see more. Thank you. Be safe. Peace.